So just about a week ago, I released my top five favorite Linux distributions for the year 2021, my personal favorite ones. And one of the distributions on that list is Farin OS. Now, shortly after publishing that video, this Linux distribution underwent a good series of updates releasing their October 2021 snapshot. So in this video, what we're going to do is check out some of those improvements and do just a general review of the system. So right here, this is the Farron OS announcement for these updates, including all the improvements. One thing, if you're currently already running Farron OS, you may experience an issue with updating. I'll go ahead and link to an article that goes over how to easily fix that. And if we go ahead and scroll down here, we can see that there were some changes in the snapshot terminology, and then that's when we get into the actual changes. So let's go ahead and run through these real quick. First, the one thing that you may notice is there are going to be some new wallpapers. So if I go over here to configure desktop and wallpaper, you can see that they're going to be some absolutely beautiful wallpapers and there may be some that you had before that have gotten removed, but overall this is looking really good. Personally, I like uh, this sheets one right here. So if I go ahead and apply that, that's what we get. It's beautiful, but I'm actually going to keep it on this uh, mountain one right here. So let's apply that. Now another thing you're going to notice when you first boot into the system is there is a new splash screen that looks pretty good and they also have a new lock screen as soon as we log in and we see there's a really nice Farron OS splash screen. We're going to go ahead and go over to our start menu and click this little key to go ahead and lock it. And for this actual lock screen it's going to go ahead and show you the time and date. And if I go ahead and start interacting with it you could see it looks kind of similar to that splash screen we have our name our profile picture, we can input our password, very beautiful background. If we look over here, we have our time and day up here as well as a link to our virtual keyboard. So let's go ahead and jump on in. And I will note with that lock screen, this is KDE Plasma, there's nothing locked or no attempts to try to hide any of the system settings. So anything you see here is customizable. And if you do actually have media playing on your system, you will be able to actually control that media through the lock screen. Now, another big change within this snapshot of Farron OS has been within the Firefox configuration. And one thing you may notice if you go into this system, we don't have Firefox and we have Vivality. Now, you can form your own opinions whether or not if you like Vivaldi or not, but the Farron OS developer made it very easy to go ahead and switch and pick your various web browsers. Right here we have the web browser manager where you could get anything from Vivaldi, Firefox, Brave, Falcon. A lot of the more popular Linux web browsers are here, so let's go ahead and install Firefox. And installing it through here, you're going to go ahead and get that new Farron config. So we're going to go ahead and hit yes here, type in our password. And right here we can see Firefox has been successfully installed. If we go ahead and hit OK. So now that it's installed, let's go ahead and go over to our start menu. Go over to Firefox. Wait for it to go ahead and boot up here. And here is Firefox with that Farron OS configuration. The first thing you're going to immediately notice is the title bar and all that is squished down a little bit. So it's more compact, giving you more screen real estate to work with in your web browser. And this configuration is really nice because it really slims down on some of the garbage that kind of comes with Firefox. So you see under these uh, icons here, there's none of those stories or ads or anything. If you look up here, the little pocket web extension is disabled by default. And then probably the most important thing is all the telemetry has been disabled. So Firefox isn't going to really phone home, send any of your data to anybody. Honestly, the configuration of Firefox used in Farron OS is kind of what I wish just the default was, but we can all keep dreaming. Some other things are pretty simple. We have a, a home button here and you may have noticed when we uh, first launched our browser, there wasn't any, uh, the welcome to Firefox pages or anything like that, we were able just to jump straight in and begin using this web browser as we would prefer. So Firefox has changed and out of any of the default configurations, I'm really enjoying that. I will note if you're upgrading that uh, profile is only available to people who install it fresh because otherwise uh, if they forced that it would overwrite your personal user configurations and probably create a hassle for you. But one thing I'm really looking forward to is in the next version of Farron OS or the next snapshot, there's going to be the Farron store and supposedly you're going to be able to go ahead and get that Firefox configuration through the store after the fact. So that's something that's pretty cool. Also, if you want it, you could just uh, get rid of Firefox and reinstall it through that Farron web browser manager. So now with those main updates out of the way, let's go ahead and just kind of check out this distribution if you've never seen it before. 
Uh, so this is our main desktop. This is a KDE Plasma distribution. Uh, if we look up here, we have our time up in the middle with the little drop down so you can go ahead and see all of our notifications. Let's put this on do not disturb for now. If you look down here, you have your icon centered. Your start menu is over here and it's all a, the default theme is very nice. It's just a very minimal, uh, dark, transparent theme. If we go over here, you have your system tray and then options to go ahead and control your volume, your network settings, and then we can get rid of that. Now this is just the default theme. If I open up this, we could go ahead and take a look too. It's a light theme, the icons are beautiful. But the one thing I really like about Farron, and it's kind of similar to a Zorn OS, but uh, better because it's everything is unlocked and you could do whatever you want, is how all the actual layouts and theming works. So first, when you open up your system settings, we have some quick settings. So you can quickly change in between your light, dark, and just default theme. So for example, if I go with the dark theme, hit apply, it's gonna make everything into that dark theme. And then from here, you can do other things such as change your animation speeds, like I can bump that up to instant, apply that, so then we won't get any of those. And then over here, we have quick shortcuts to energy saving and some of those screen locking settings that I mentioned earlier. And then right here under appearance, this is where we can go and actually configure that. And like I said, we have that clock, the media controls right here. That's that background that it's using. So all of this is completely configurable. Now, one thing I really like about Farron is their actual layouts. So if we go over here and go to desktop layouts, here we could select a wide variety. So we have that Farron OS default, human, which is kind of an Ubuntu style, mac and cheese, doors, classical. So let's say we wanted something like doors. We wanted this to look a little bit more like windows. So we'd go ahead and apply that. And now you can see we kind of have a Windows 11 style center here. And then if I go ahead and go to the global theme, we can actually set the theme to match the layout that we're using. So you see we have doors and doors dark. Let's say I wanted doors dark. I'd go ahead and apply that and then it would better match the theming scheme for that actual layout. And I'm not sure why my background changed. Let's go ahead and fix that real quick. So then if I go ahead and open up the start menu, you can see it's using the uh, KDE start menu that resembles Windows 11. And then of course you saw we have other layout options. Now if I go ahead and open up files, you could see some of the things that changed within here. Overall, it's a very beautiful system. And then down here, of course, we have search so we can search our system. You could click this to access all the different workspaces on your system. And then over here we have the Farron store. Now this is gonna be getting an update soon, so we're gonna be diving this into a little bit more in the future. So let's go ahead and close that out for now. Close this out and let's check out some performance. So I actually did open a couple different browsers and I've done some things on my system. So this is gonna better represent the actual performance. Give HTOP a quick install. And even after everything we've done, it's using just under a gigabyte of RAM. And I checked when I first booted the system and we are closer to about 700. So pretty good for a KDE Plasma install with all these different transparencies and configurations and things like that. If I go ahead and quit out of here, NeoFetch isn't installed, but I already installed it. So we can kind of see what's going on on this system. We have Farron OS that is currently running the 5.11 kernel. This is an Ubuntu based operating system has a fairly hefty amount of packages. We're running Bash, Kwin, and Plasma, of course. Now, before we end this video, one thing I forgot to mention is the welcome screen and the tour. Two other features I really like about Farron OS. One, this is the welcome screen when you first boot into the system. Here, you could go ahead and add Snap support or go to the store and get flat packages. We also have introduction here where you can go ahead and learn about Farron OS, learn about the Linux ecosystem in general, including the actual desktop base, all the different applications, things like that. And then we have community get involved. If I go ahead and hit getting started here, this is going to give us some post installation tips, including the updates, drivers, language input, some troubleshooting things. And from here, we could also go ahead and relaunch the tour. So when you first boot into your system, you're gonna get this Farron OS welcome tour. You go ahead and start it here. It detected that I'm in a virtual machine. So it's gonna offer me that installation. I go ahead and hit next. Farron has an awesome transfer tool. So if you're on Windows or another version of Farron OS, you go ahead and use this tool to transfer over files and things like that. If we go next, we have an easy option to install the Ubuntu restricted codex. So you can install that there and have easier access to multimedia, things like that. Here we have tablet mode or fair and default. Then it's going to give us some simple instructions on how to actually use our system and where some things are at. 
a quick link to open up the Farron store, a quick option to change between the light, dark, and mixed themes here. If we go next, you could change your accent colors of your system. And then next again, it's gonna offer you to get KDE Connect to go ahead and link your phone to this system. And then next, we can configure night color, which adds that color temperature change depending on the time or however you decide to configure it. And then all done. So overall, I enjoy Farron OS. If I want to use an Ubuntu-based KDE Plasma desktop, and I mean, there's a lot of them. You could go with a KDE Neon, you could go with Kubuntu, you could go with Farron. There's a lot of them. Out of all of them, I honestly prefer Farron OS just because it it's still completely unlocked. There's nothing hidden from you, but there's also those easy layouts and configuration options. It's not as intuitive and easy to change and easy to understand for somebody who's like completely brand new as something like Zorn. But if you have any experience with Linux and you want to be in that Ubuntu KDE Plasma environment, I definitely recommend Farron OS. With all that, I would like to thank our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. We have Mitchell Valentino, Sledgehammer, a new uh, executive level producer. Thank you so much for your support. And we have Kyle, Phil Mac, Timo Anthony, and Chris Curtis. So thank you all, and thank you to all the other Techie and Techie Plus members for supporting the channel. And big thank you to Dominic for spending the time and effort to create such an awesome Linux distribution. Uh, with all that said, links to everything we discussed will be down in the description, including the download link for Farron OS. So with all that said, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day, and goodbye.